Bitcoin is possibly one of the greatest financial inventions of all time that has the potential to change our monetary system and global economy forever. And in this video, I'm going to reveal to you my $50,000 Bitcoin investment between buying the currency a lot and mining it with these ASIC S19 computers. It's really loud in here! But first, what is a Bitcoin? And why is it so valuable today? It's not something you can physically hold, but it's making people rich. And to explain why, I drove out to rural Iowa to tour $20 million hosting facility. So today I'm here with JP at the first Bitcoin mining facility you ever started. Now before getting into stuff like this, you said you used to mine Ethereum on GPUs back in the day. Could you get into a little bit about that story on how you got started with mining in general? So I started off by raising $100,000 from family and myself, and we bought a bunch of GPU miners, 300 graphics cards. We were running those in Graham, North Carolina, an old yard mill. It was a great time. We were mining 500 Ethereum a day, but we were selling that Ethereum for only a few dollars a piece to pay our power bill every month and to pay our investors. If we would have held onto that Ethereum, it would have been worth over 500 grand a day worth of mining profits. That's why capital allocation and how you manage the capital during the mining is so important. And how many years did it take to go from mining Ethereum to doing this current operation today and starting this Bitcoin mine So in the Ethereum mine started in 2016, so three years to get from that to this operation. We had a few other projects we were doing with people like Temecula, California, working with a solar farm out there, stuff in Oklahoma, stuff in New York, and then eventually we found us this spot in Iowa this one acre piece of land and we built this nice red building behind me. We ended up having to borrow from my family's apartment buildings and office space, lent against that to buy the land, to build the infrastructure. And then when we needed a lot more money, I was like, crap, I need more money to finish this project, to expand, to get more cash flow. I had my parents lend against their house. So they lent against their house and they were able to help fund this facility here. And that got us through from 2019 to 2020, 2021. And then this facility became full and we looked for another one and we expanded 45 minutes away at the St. Anthony facility that we showed you. Filled to the brim with with Bitcoin miners, the owner JP is mining upwards of one Bitcoin per day between four active facilities. Right on one Bitcoin a day, which is you know pretty significant for a company ourselves. It's been a journey and we're growing the amount of megawatts and hash rate and just always getting there. To mine one Bitcoin, it takes 330,000 kilowatts of energy. That's 4.3 kilograms of gold production, 37,500 liters of petrol, and enough power to electrify 667,000 African homes. But a Bitcoin wasn't always so hard to get. 10 years ago, you could mine multiple coins every single day. Priced at just $70 each, Bitcoin was worth one thousandth of the price that it was in its peak in late 2021. And I still think it has a lot higher to go. But before I break down why, as we go outside the house, you guys can see we got a package. And inside it is a crypto miner that we're going to be unboxing. So this machine isn't exactly a Bitcoin miner. It's supposed to mine a cryptocurrency known as Caspa, which is one of those altcoins. So let's go ahead and open this box up, baby. So they sent me a really cool crypto miner. Let's go. So this is a KS1. This thing looks sick. I'm honestly so excited for this machine, guys, because unlike my other machines, which are at JP's facility, this one right here is going to be mining at my house. And more specifically, we're going to be mining in this super dusty garage. This place needs a lot of work. I already have two ASIC S19 Pros running at JP's facility, which are worth about $5,000. And then this machine down here that's going to be running in my garage costs about 2700 bucks. But thankfully, I got it for free from my friends over at ASICmarketplace.com. They're a website that offers all sorts of different ASIC miners, from machines from Bitcoin mining to Dogecoin mining, for machines for altcoins like Caspa, which is what this machine in front of me mines. Caspa is a crypto altcoin with a huge loyal following, particularly of people on Reddit who think it has great tech and it bridges all of the gaps in the Bitcoin system. And many of those same people on this Reddit thread think that when the next crypto bull run happens, that Caspa might 100x. You guys have to keep in mind though that Reddit isn't necessarily the right place to go for crypto advice. But when this machine starts mining, it'll cost $1.44 daily in electricity cost. And in turn, the machine will mine a little bit over 104 Caspa daily or about $11 at its current price point. That'll leave me with a profit of a bit over $300 monthly. That said though, the price for Caspa has gone on a huge run over the last few months, so it's only going to be this profitable if the price
price stays that high. But unfortunately, guys, there's yet another issue. This machine needs a 240 volt outlet to run. And when you go inside the garage, you guys can see we don't have any of those. We've only got the standard 120 volt outlets. And a 240 volt outlet isn't exactly cheap to install. I just looked it up online and it looks like it's gonna be pretty expensive. But we have an electrician coming later today to start the process of installing one. But shout out asicmarketplace.com for sending me this free miner. It's the only place I've been buying my crypto miners from. So be sure to check them out at the top link down below in the description. And for the holidays, they're doing $70 off any machine. But on that note, guys, when we go downstairs, you can see the 240 volt outlet has officially been installed. I ended up having to put the outlet in my basement since it's closer to the control panel over there. But while we wait to order some additional supplies to get this miner running, let's flash back to my trip to Iowa, touring some of JP's facilities. We are now pulling up on yet another Bitcoin mining facility. This is a new one too, right? I don't think I've been here. This one was built this year. It's gonna be fun. Cool. Let's go check it out. This location costs roughly one and a half million dollars to set up. That included two transformers for $75,000 a piece, two switch gears for around 45,000, 16 pods for around 40 to 50,000 dollars per pod. Then all the electrical work to connect the pods together to do the underground conduit from the transformers to the switch gear where the energy goes underground, the concrete pads, the gravel, the dirt work, and the work trailer. All are a monthly expense or had an upfront cost. This site has two internet connections, both Starlink and fiber running to it. Last year when I was out here, Bitcoin was at $16,000 a coin. And today it's at $40,000 a coin. How does that change the landscape for mining? So at $16,000 a coin, we're running the operation in a very low cost mode. We have maybe less technicians per facility. We're trying to save expenses we can because the profitability is really low and it's, it's horrible. When it's at 44,000, we're doing the exact opposite. We're hiring more people. We're building out new infrastructure. We're deploying more facilities, pouring concrete in the ground. So the bull market definitely brings rejuvenation in the space. And in Bitcoin mining, we see about two years of up and then two years of down. So we just got through with the two years of down and now we're in the two years of up market and everyone's kind of preparing for the for the Bitcoin mining halving, which happens every four years, which causes the price to go up and affects that the price movement. The Bitcoin halving is coming up in April of 2024. And from the outside, this may seem bad for Bitcoin mining as you're mining half as much Bitcoin for the same amount of machinery and overhead expenses. But what tends to happen after Bitcoin halving is cause a short of Bitcoin on exchanges. And with the same amount of demand, that drives the price of Bitcoin up. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. And every four years, half as many Bitcoin are released into circulation. So unlike the dollar, Bitcoin is a deflationary asset with a cap supply and less and less being produced over time. It also can't be manipulated by clueless politicians who don't understand how economics work. Do you have any price predictions for Bitcoin during this next halving? I There's think Bitcoin be will hit over $250,000 before the end of 2020. 25. And would you sell at that point? Or that just depends? Yeah, I definitely want to take some money off the table during the price rise as it's dramatically going up, but you don't want to take money off too early. And with the environment of the dollar becoming worth less and Bitcoin becoming worth more and the ETFs potentially coming out, it could blow past that number. So it's important that, you know, just like allocating capital, you're allocating strategically over a set period of time. You want to sell strategically over a set period of time. Don't dump all your coins in one day, sell over a few months. Now, my $50,000 Bitcoin investment is diversified between owning an entire Bitcoin and also having about a $5,000 investment into Bitcoin mining. It took me years and years to get to this point, and my investment in Bitcoin constitutes between 20 and 25% of my net worth, so this investment is no joke. And if you look at my reasoning why, a $30,000 salary in 1980 is equivalent to $160,000 in purchasing power today. So wages are not keeping up with inflation, and that's due to the mismanagement of our currency. Just in the last few years, trillions and trillions of dollars have been released into our economy, and I think Bitcoin is not only a hedge to this, but a solution. So going into 2024 and 2025, I think this investment is going to play out very well. We are now pulling up to Bitcoin mining operation number three. And you guys can tell here, it's still under construction, right, JP? Distribution unit right here. This unit supplies power from a switch gear, which comes from in here, these long bus bars, you know, these metal bars that move the power into these units. Then each one of these breaks down to a breaker. Each breaker powers one machine and has a plug on the side where you plug in the power cords. There's 48 plugs on each one of these. Each machine will go up against the back wall here. So these pods range anywhere from, let's say, $60,000 and down, depending on the customizations you add to them. And that's before adding any miners into them. And this is what a pod looks like without miners in it. And this is what it looks like full of miners. And last question while we exit this pod, how long do you think until this location is going to be done? It is going to be finalized and then we're just waiting on moving machines. So the machines will be moved in January and February. But this location should be ready for equipment, I would say, within three weeks 
weeks. Blake's just finishing up the last of the patch panel work that we have here. I just made it back from my trip to Iowa. And to end this video off, when you open the front door, you guys can see we got two packages and I already opened this one up. But anyways, guys, this is the final stuff we need to set up the Caspa Miner. But to set up this machine in my basement, first up, we're gonna open this Amazon package. This cord alone costs like $200. Essentially what this thing does is plug into our 240 volt outlet and then we're gonna take this P13 to P14 cable we bought and plug it into this thing right here. I'm not gonna do that yet, however, since first we have to connect the ethernet cable. And this ethernet's actually the final thing we purchased. It's 150 feet and hopefully it's enough to go from the basement to the office room upstairs where the router is. To get started, we're gonna plug the first half of the ethernet cable into the top of this miner and then we're gonna start running this all the way upstairs. And to my surprise, guys, 150 feet was actually more than long enough to go up the stairs with the ethernet cable through my kitchen and then into the office where the Wi-Fi router is. And you can see I still got plenty of cable left. But now that that's done, we're gonna head downstairs and back over to the miner in the basement. And we're gonna go and plug in this P13 to P14 cable. I already have this side plugged in. And what we're gonna do next is go ahead and plug this side in. I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty loud. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially mining crypto. And on this machine, you can actually change the fan speed to, for example, go from 50% down here to 100%. We're gonna click save over here, but then it's gonna be super loud like this, or you can reduce the speed to let's say 50%, and then it sounds a lot better. And then you can actually walk around the upstairs of your house and barely hear it. Drop a like for part two, guys, and peace out.